This video explains codominance, and for our example, we will use the ABO blood groups. First, let's draw a red blood cell, like this. On the surface of the red blood cell are little proteins that stick out. These proteins basically serve to identify the cell. These proteins that stick out of the surface of the cell are called antigens. Humans have a gene that controls the production of the antigens. In other words, the gene contains the instructions to build the antigens. So let's look at the different alleles, which are forms of a gene, in humans that build these antigens. There are three alleles. One is called IA, one is called IB, and one is called little i. These two alleles, the IA and the IB, are co-dominant. In other words, they both show an active role in the production of antigens. Whereas the third allele, the one labeled little i, is recessive to the other two. Okay, let's explore how these alleles affect the genotype and the phenotype. I'll color code the three alleles like this so we can keep track. Since we are diploid, one genotype could be IA, IA. And this is another possibility, IB, IB. And this is another possibility, recessive I, recessive I. The phenotype for this red one is type A blood. And these are the phenotypes for the other two. So what does phenotype A actually look like on the cell? Well, if this circle was the cell's membrane, the type A phenotype would make antigens sticking out of the cell that have the type A genetic code for making proteins. So I'll show them with these little red lines and circles. The type B cell would look like this. Here's the cell membrane. But it would have a different antigen sticking out, represented by these blue lines and blue circles. And sadly to say, the type O phenotype has a red blood cell that looks like that. There is a mutation in the allele, and it doesn't really produce an antigen. No antigen, so I will leave it like that. We're not finished. There's another genotype that would look like this possible possibility. It's going to have an IA allele and an IB allele. This is called type AB, and you may be a type AB blood person. And this is how the phenotype would be expressed at the cellular level. There's a the cell membrane you would find both A antigen types sticking out of the surface of the cell membrane and B antigens sticking out of the surface of the cell membrane. And that is why this is called codominance. Both of the alleles actually make something. There you go, codominance. There are two more genotypes possible. One would look like this, 
I A allele paired with recessive allele. This genotype would also yield type A blood. And then there is this genotype. One allele is the IB, while the second allele is the recessive I. And this is also type B blood. So remember, if the cell has type A antigen sticking out, it's type A or type B. Or if it has both, it's called type AB, and that's an example of codominance. And if it has neither antigen, it has type O blood. So for humans, there are three alleles, six genotypes, and four phenotypes. So let's think about how the ABO blood type relates to the kind of blood someone could receive from or give to. You can see I have the four phenotypes outlined on the left. So the person's immune system creates antibodies, which are proteins often attached to T killer cells in your immune system. And I think of these antibodies as an army of Pac-Man-like creatures that are running around in the blood system hunting for invaders. So if you have type A blood, you have anti B antibodies. And a type A person could receive blood from another type A person or a type O person because the type O does not have any, any antigens on the surface. A type B person has anti A antibodies in their immune system. And they can receive type B blood, also type O blood. Interestingly, a type A B person has no antibodies in the bloodstream because if they did, the antibodies would attack their own cells. So a type AB person can have any type of blood. They're called the universal recipient. They have no antibodies in their bloodstream. And finally, type O people have both kinds of antibodies in their bloodstream. And as a result, they can only receive one type of blood, which is their very own type, type O. You can see from this final column that if you have type A blood, you can give to type A people or type AB. If you have type B blood, you can give to type B people or type AB. If you have type AB blood, you can only give it to type AB people. And this last one, if you have type O blood, you can give blood to anybody, including type O. So finally, type AB are known as the universal recipient, while type O, they're known as the universal donor. Well, that's about it.